This NFL DFS picks week five edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. Winning season is back, and MyBookie is now offering a 100% deposit bonus when you use the promo code SGP. That's MyBookie.ag promo code SGP to play, win, and get paid. We're also brought to you by Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a new daily fantasy sports app built specifically for player props. Download the app in the app store and use the promo code SGP for an instant deposit match up to $50. That's thrivefantasy.com promo code SGP. Sign up and prop up today. We're also brought to you by Ace per head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers and they make it super easy to start your own sports book. Plus Ace is offering up six weeks free over at acepred.com slash SGP. That's acepred.com slash S G P. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money greens. My partner picks right real money. Kramer. What's happening? Kramer dog. Just, just do me a favor. Just start hitting the cash register. Just bang that cash register, Sean, because I don't, I don't know if you were aware. Of course you were aware. Yes. Uh, Monday night football. We had a double header. Yep. We, uh, as we always do, we recapped week four and then we gave out some Sunday props, night live show, some props. We like for Monday night football. We gave out a DFS lineup. We like, and, and before we recorded it, I said, Hey, I'm going to, I like this week because we get two games, which means we don't have to do a showdown lineup. Yep. Regular style. standard lineup. Told you I felt good about the lineup. We're sitting here after we record the college picks episode and I, uh, we're watching the pregame and I'm thinking to myself, I feel great about this lineup. Let me go enter it 10 times in the millionaire maker. Oh my God. Real D gen move, right? I already have my action. Then I'm like, I need, I need some more sweat. I'm talking with a uh, pick Dundee, Colby, Dan. I'm like, Colby, <laughs> I don't have enough action. So I enter it in a hundred dollar 11 man, a uh, uh, contest. And then I proceed to watch the early game. Things are going well, but then the kids are like, are we going to watch star Wars episode eight tonight? So I'm like, Oh, this is interesting. I got, I got some, <laughs> let me do this. Let me do this. So we start watching it. I'm checking scores periodically. And at some point you give me the heads up. Hey, your lineup must be doing well. And I see that I got a defensive touchdown. I got all that. And then Tanya is going absolutely. Oh no, yeah. We'll get shit. to him in a little bit. So I start monitoring the situation. And I'm like, ah, oh, this is fun. My team's doing well, but whatever. And then a string of everything could have that could have gone right went right for me, Sean. And I popped it up and I see, holy shit, all 10 of my entries are tied for seventh place. Oh my God. With by the way, two people had my same lineup. So hope if you are a listener to this program, <laughs> I have a screenshot so I know who your names are. If you can prove, email podcast at sports gambling podcast. We'll get you some we'll get your free shirt. Get you some swag if you played my lineup. Uh, if you're one of these two people. But uh so at that time I had set ten lineups tied for seventh place. And you know what my difference was between me and the lineups ahead of me? Julio well, fucking Jones. Oh no. And he, he had a decent first half and then w- uh, got banged up and couldn't pack, come back in so the second half. At this half. point with about 10 minutes of game time left, I had, I was sitting in seventh place uh, and, and it's just, I have the screenshot. It's like, you're cashing $70,000 right now. No. <laughs> oh, oh, like I can't, I'm fucking, I can't, I, I'm not worried about the fucking rebellion and the goddamn <laughs> first order anymore. I'm I, all I can think about is so I'm, I'm weirdly pacing around the room. Like everyone else is sitting on a couch watching this movie. I'm pacing back to the kitchen where I can pretend like I'm just getting another snack, but really I'm just firing up. The, <laughs> I got the game going. Hashtag uh, so anyway, yeah, I mean, it, the unfortunate that a, my, my big buy of Julio Jones turned out to be what could have been the difference maker in me winning, winning the million. Which would have been a what a story that would have been if I tied with oh. myself ten times for a million, <laughs> uh, but but it was it was it was a fun sweat. I ended up cashing 130 bucks per lineup, so 1300, not so bad. But you'd want to talk about a week and a half stretch, Sean. You really a yeah. two week stretch. You've been on fire. Where I have given you. Oh, hot, 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 hot. Hot, 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 I'm up hot, a lot of units. We, you know, we don't, we don't want to talk in units when it comes to DFS land, but I, I'm up, I'm up multiple thousands of dollars and you could have had those, some of those thousands, you could have had some of this fucking money. I give this out and public airways documented Twitter. And we want to talk about close calls almost hit the DJs only with Odell Beckham. <laughs> oh my God. And then oh. Monday night comes no, around. I didn't almost hit it. You almost said I I was close in concept only. Yes. You were actually close. Well, yeah, my big DJ's only prop bet. 
Hashtag oh Dejan Zoe. I, I think I gave it out 40, 50 to 1. Robert Tanyan to have a hundred yards receiving, one touchdown in Green Bay to win. I felt very good about Tanyan to have the touchdown. He he ends up having three touchdowns. Somehow doesn't get the first touchdown. They had four touchdowns. Doesn't get the first touchdown, which I also had. Uh, Green Bay gets the win, which again that was easy money. Kaching kaching. Wow. And then the motherfucker got ninety eight yards. Ninety eight. And I, I don't know if you were watching live at that time, Ryan, but. It was one of those plays where I feel like if the game was on the line, he could have got those two extra yards. But it was one of those things where he kind of like ta- makes he wants to make sure he goes down in bounds yeah. and keeps the clock running. Probably yeah. a good play Little did he know. for Tanya overall. But a three touchdown Tanya performance, uh, and oh my god, it was it was a great sweat, so much fun. And again, I don't regret not hitting it because the sweat I uh, felt so alive. And we we're I. I'm making this guarantee. We will hit one of these goddamn DJ only bets if it kills us, Ryan. Between now and the end of the NFL season, bunch we, of we 100% calls. will. I I guarantee that. I mean, really. And the other prop bets, I did I did very well, and I give you over Aaron Aaron Rodgers passing yards, over Aaron Jones receiving yards, and the Patriots over one and a half field goal attempts. I, I mean, the only reason that doesn't hit is Brian Hoyer. And you tweeted that out. He had a sim like collapse <laughs> at the end of the first half. Basically, you just can't take a sack. Takes a crazy sack. Also turns it over. Uh, a fumble, bad fumble in field goal range as well. So he must have had the under well, on I, Patriots. Field I'll goals. be honest. I did a double take when I saw the game. When I heard, when I heard, uh, I guess it was Nance saying it's gonna or Romo saying it's gonna go to halftime. Huh? <laughs> I was just like, holy shit! This is the exact scenario we saw play out. Over and over again in the Sims. So yes, Sim Brian Hoyer made an appearance on Monday Night Football. That he did. A uh, big uh, DFS podcast. We're going to be giving out our uh, our DFS lineup, salary based, and then introducing our Thrive Fantasy segment. Again, it's like DFS, but with only player props instead mm. of instead of salary based. So stay tuned for that. No explanation needed there. I, I, our audience, they get it. You, do, I mean, simple enough. But again, if you want to bet some regular player props, head over to mybookie.ag. They got the DGEN's only player props. Which we'll get one of those. I'm I know it. I know it in my heart. The DGEN, the gambling gods, they respect and honor degeneracy. And if you're like a, a DGEN only, you know the only place to get those crazy player props and all the regular sane bets they offer is over at mybookie.ag. Promo code SGP so you can get that 100% deposit bonus. Live betting, in game wagering. And again, I was one game off on the Jimmy Butler DJ and only bet, which I've been throwing out uh, so close. Should have bet at game three. Again, I was locked in on the uh, Eagles game. Didn't think to even toss Jimmy Buckets in there for game three. Had it in game two. But again, that's it's the white whale. That's why you got to keep throwing out that line. One day, going to get me that whale. And whether you're a whale or a minnow, mybookie.ag is the place to bet. Use our promo code mybookie.ag, promo code SGP. Get that 100% deposit bonus. And of course, play, win, and get paid. Joining us on the line, DFS fantasy football expert for the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, Adam Pelletier. Adam, how about those Buffalo Bills, baby? <laughs> oh, man, we're circling. So- in the wagons. I don't know. The city of Charlotte must have hit all the folding tables on me because I've just been looking for them everywhere. Can't find a damn one to smash to celebrate for. No. Well, and that's what I'd like to see. Our Bills fans doing their best to jump through tables in the social distancing manner uh, by yourselves in the backyard. That I mean, how how has that not started yet? Maybe I'm just not part of Bills Mafia. I haven't seen as much of it. I think we're expecting success. So we're going to wait until the playoffs to bring it out this year. We're expecting Josh Allen to kick ass. We're expecting the bills to destroy everybody. But if it's going to come out, it's going to come out next Thursday when the chiefs come to town to play the bills. Oh, and yeah. What we talked about preseason as an early AFC championship game preview. Yeah, and everybody I mean, wanted to shit all over that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I mean, you're you're talking to a guy who uh, bought himself a lot of Josh Allen shares in best ball. 
went on a limb, named him the number one preseason fantasy football quarterback, which I mention every week because he keeps having monster fantasy Wait, football weeks. You've mentioned this before. Yes. And I'm and I'm even mentioning that I keep mentioning it, but how can you not talk about Josh Allen? All he's done is like slightly dialed in his passing game. He's gotten he's gotten a legit deep threat with Stefan Diggs. Can I say and, something and, controversial? And he's, and he's running goal line. He's also gotten very fortunate with his lackadaisical giving a fuck about holding on to the ball. <laughs> There's been a lot of opportunities for him to give shit away, which he tried to do with the Rams, but I'll, I'll give it to him. He is overcoming his uh, dis- disability uh, known as the K metric. <laughs> like he has the highest score in the history of the K metric and he's doing everything to overcome it. So it, kudos it, to him. Hey, I'm winning money on this guy. Yeah. Uh, he's most importantly quarterbacking my, uh, a team of mine in the FFPC that I currently sit just outside the top hundred in Sean. So love you, Josh Allen. I apologize, but your eyes are too close together. <laughs> he's, he's beating it all beating defenses and beating <laughs> the K metric. It's been a uh, it's been a wild season for fantasy and daily fantasy. Adam doing a great job keeping track of uh, our rankings over at the website. Oh, I love that. Tons of uh, of great articles. F- know, Sean, real quick, do you yeah. know how often when someone asks me what I think about someone, I just send the <laughs> rankings? No, it's uh, it's great because it. it Sorry, get, bro. I'm published. We get hit up in our personal life all the time. I do the same thing with the NFL picks. Who do you like this week? Well, a <laughs> download the podcast, but b click on this link if not. So. Uh, Adam been a great resource over at sports gambling podcast.com and tons of late breaking stuff in sports gambling podcast.com slash slack. Uh, love to get your thoughts here so far on this week. Let's get into it. DFS lineup. What are you doing at the quarterback position? Adam kick things off. Well, the bills got a juicy lineup and juicy matchup this weekend. Tennessee hasn't been in their facility. The first day they'll be in is tomorrow. So they're going to be rough. They haven't hit in a week and a half. You better believe Josh Allen is going to light it up on (laughs) Sunday and just a little bit more. Josh Allen praise over his last 16 games. Josh Allen has 38 touchdowns through the air and on the ground and only four interceptions. All right. Josh Allen is just killing it as far as that taking care of the ball. All right, he's only lost five fumbles, so nine turnovers versus 38 touchdowns. That is a man on a mission. That is a man possessed. That is a number one quarterback, and he is a great value this weekend against a rusty and beat up and tired Titans team. Yeah, and and just to expand on uh, Adam's point there, it sounds like the latest test came back negative. Titans will be in their facility if you're listening to this today on Wednesday. Uh, by all accounts, the game is a go. So, if you have any, again, we're taping this on a Tuesday. Who knows in the COVID era how these things shake out? That's why you got to stay tuned uh, on social media and, and and in our Slack channel. But yeah, it looks like Buffalo is is going to happen in Tennessee, and that Tennessee defense so fraudulent, three and zero straight up, but zero and three against the spread, and they've they've really had some uh, some bad games in the back end. I don't know what's happened to their. Supposedly tough defense. I will definitely be playing a Josh Allen lineup. Not going to go Josh Allen for the uh, for the podcast because I knew uh, Adam would have us covered there. Kramer, what are you doing at the QB position? You, you know, I didn't actually see that coming because Adam is a very objective guy. Doesn't always <laughs> wear his passion on his sleeve when it comes to his fantasy advice. So I, I went Josh Allen because there's two, oh, okay. two things I've learned during my stretch of fantasy dominance right now, Sean. One, I've been spending on defense. Mm. Two, I've been spending on quarterback. And so while I could totally try to entertain the idea of Daniel Jones and Evan Ingram stack this week against that Cowboys defense, it's very juicy. But why why take why just not grab the chips that are on the table? This Titans team, forget the Broncos game week one. They've given up 30 points to the Jags, 30 points to the Vikings. That's all I have to see. Josh Allen is going to murder this team. And oh, by the way, Vrabel. We have confirmed he did cut of us dick because he thought he could get rid of the COVID that way. So that was that was his way out. Fade the Titans this week. Well, you mentioned it. The New York Giants haven't scored a touchdown in the past two games. We didn't mention that part, but now they go against the Cowboys who are letting up forty points a game. You didn't pick Daniel Jones. No, I didn't. I I I briefly had Devonta Freeman in my running back slot. Uh, I've since changed it, but. I mean, he's going up against this Cowboys offense that let up 300 rushing yards. Yep. 
it's it's going to be an interesting matchup because you couldn't find a worse offense. Um, I mean, the Jets at least are getting touchdowns. You couldn't find a worse offense, and you couldn't find a worse defense. Yep. Very interesting NFC least matchup. I went uh, off the board here a little bit. Maybe I'm getting a little too cute, but I'm just seeing. I'm just going off what I saw uh, yesterday, last Monday, or the Monday night game. The Atlanta Falcons just have no secondary. No secondary coming into that game. They even lost guys leading up to it. They they more injuries are just piling up. They have a short week. And Teddy Bridgewater. How do you not tell me you're going to debut the Butler, and we don't have the Butler up on the screen? Are you kidding me? Teddy Bridgewater, fifty nine hundred dollars. It's giving yeah. me so much roster flexibility. I, I'm going heavy on this Carolina Atlanta game for this lineup, but I, I think it could be a, a scoring fest in Atlanta. Uh, it's just and maybe, and it doesn't look like they've knock on wood. Doesn't look like they've uh, fired their coach. Hopefully, they don't between now and kickoff because that is <laughs> that could be a rallying point. But yeah, give me Teddy Bridgewater, fifty nine hundred dollars. Adam, what are you doing, running back? Uh, running back, starting it off with Mike Davis. Also want to get a piece of that Carolina Atlanta game. And big news just coming across: Reggie Bonifant went under the practice squad IR today, which means Mike Davis. We thought he might get some of his role chipped away by Bonifant after he balled out last week, but he's not there anymore. Mike Davis is going to have a hundred percent of the touches or close to that in this backfield. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater loves to check it down, you know, like we talked about. And Mike Davis has just been an absolute stud. 6,400 in a positive matchup. Yes, please. Check, set, and forget. Kramer, running back. Uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. <laughs> uh, come on, they're playing the Raiders. His value has gotten depressed off of that nice uh, early, early start. And I think it's early and often uh, this chiefs team, they could use a game where they can go into cruise control a little bit. That was a weird spot against the, uh, the fighting Belichick. It's last a baby week. fucking and, wheel, man. And I think Andy Reid's been desperate for him to be able to just lean on Edwards Hilaire. And I, I think if this is the game to do it, I'm going to spend up a little bit. 6,800. Raiders just can't stop anyone. The Raiders. I also have Mike Davis in my lineup, a little QB running back stack. Ooh. Cause he's getting involved in the passing game. Adam hit on it, but he's coming off a six target yep. five reception game. The Butler likes checking down. I just think they they're going to come in and uh, put up a lot of points against this decimated Atlanta yep. offense. And it's in the dome. Like uh, this, this Carolina team, we hit on it preseason. Uh, they're one of the fastest teams out there. Uh, of course that was with uh, McCaffrey in there, but still a very fast team I've been overall. I've been and, impressed. And, and they seem to be re- re- um, responding to Matt rules, coaching and, and Joe Brady drawing up some great uh, game plans for them early. So I, I liked what I see or saw from Carolina against the uh, Cardinals at home, but I think a great opportunity again, Lana on the road, Adam, what are you doing for your second running back spot? So went down a little bit on the salary here, but looking at Antonio Gibson uh, for the Washington football team, been increasing his points each and every week. He's on a, he's on three straight weeks with a touchdown and he finally got the receiving game going after watching what the bills did with Singletary to that Rams defense a couple weeks ago. I'm confident that Antonio Gibson's going to have a big day through the air, racking up those PPR yards. And let's be honest, who else is Dwayne Haskins throwing to if it's not going to be Antonio Gibson and Terry McLaurin? So fire up some Antonio Gibson this week heading against a Rams defense that isn't actually that great <laughs> through the air or on the ground. Sean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little counterculture here because you're probably gonna say, hey, Bill O'Brien, he's gone. Why would we still want to play David Johnson? That's why I'm playing him. I think he's going to be a very unpopular play this week against a yeah. plus 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 matchup. Well, this what, past what, Sunday, what, what's Romeo Cornell going to do? Well, uh, we're we're watching know. football, and what do we say? Uh, we might need to start fading the Jags with running backs every yeah. week because it, it's it's just Mixon went off. It's just an absolute spot, and and David Johnson looked pretty good that week in that week one spot, and we kind of made a no. Like I I even said, hey. Uh, I'm not super upset. I ended up with him in a team that I share with Dick Olson, even though I, I did not approve of the pick at the time. I was okay with it, and now I think this is an absolute dynamo spot. 5200. He could. I'm if I'm mi- unless I'm missing the situation. I we know Houston's bad, but this could be a spot where he gets 25 touches 
And so 5,200 feels like a value. And by the way, I'm just on fire. Have we talked about how I'm on fucking fire right now? So sometimes you just play the hunts, David Johnson, 5,200. Got to have a little cut handicap. And, and to me, this Bengals Ravens game, I think uh, we haven't seen a breakout game from him yet, but I think this is the Mark Ingram breakout mm. game at home, $5,400 against his Bengals defense. Who oh, James Robinson had a pretty good game. Now certainly you're you're worried a little bit about them splitting up the carries or Lamar sucking up the rushing yards, but I just got a feeling that this Bengals defense yeah. not amazing, and I think I think Ingram gets some of the goal line stuff. I just it's more of a hunch than anything. I think Mark Ingram has that breakout game, fifty four hundred at home, good spot against the Bengals. Yeah, Adam, uh, what receivers do you like? Who are you starting off with? Starting off. Got to go with DeAndre Hopkins. Had a down week last week, but going up against the Jets secondary <laughs> that hasn't been able to cover anything, uh, you'd be better off in coverage if you just threw a blanket out there and <laughs> hope that it would get in the way and a receiver would trip over it. DeAndre Hopkins is going to be pissed. He only had four catches for 40 yards last week. He's going to absolutely just blow up this week against that soft, soft Jets defense. And I just want to caution y'all against that Mark Ingram play. He's been trending downward in his snap count every week. It's just going down, down, down more. And Gus Edwards has been taking over some of that work. So although you got some logic there with the falling into the end zone, you got to be nervous about Mark Ingram and that declining snap count. Sometimes you need a dog for a dog fight. Breaking news. I've now switched my running back to Antonio (laughs) Gibson. (laughs) <laughs> no, I, 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 I was early on Antonio Gibson preseason. Yeah. You get, you can call, you can take it. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to switch that. Good call Zach I'll g- or uh, Adam. <laughs> I'll give you credit for that. Uh, I, I'm just stacking. I'm not going to overthink it. I'm going to, t- you can try to get cute here and go John Brown. I think maybe Adam's getting, maybe Adam's being too cute. Uh, I'm just going to go with Diggs. Dig Diggs has been uh, a target that he's looking to, especially around the end zone. And as we predicted, Sean Diggs, perfect wide receiver for Josh Allen, uh, has that massive catch radius, seven thousand. I'm investing fourteen thousand five hundred in your Buffalo Bills this week, Adam. DeAndre Hopkins again, Adam, you just nailed it. I'm also on DeAndre Hopkins. I, I think the Jets, like they just keep blitzing, so I imagine, like I wouldn't be surprised if Hopkins has like twelve catches in this game, just because they're good at getting those bubble screens going with him. And uh, I think they're going to be bringing the heat and he's just going to be checking down and the jets. Clearly they don't have a good answer for the deep ball either. So I, I think this defense is just super porous. Everyone is just out on this team. Yep. Um, yeah. It's just a great spot. So give me Deandre Hopkins as well. Who's your, who's your second receiver, Adam? Uh, see, this is where we get to the Bills stack because we got Cole Beasley running Ooh. at 4,700. <laughs> Cole Beasley, second on the Bills in targets, second on the Bills in yardage, and so and first in catch percentage with guys over 10 targets. He's just been an absolute monster. He's been Josh's go to guy since day one. Whereas John Brown's production has dipped a little bit, just a little bit with the arrival of Stefan Diggs. Cole Beasley staying consistent, staying productive. And at that price point, 4,700 for a guy who's going to get you double digits and is going to have a big week. Again, that Titan secondary, like we talked about, has been just trash and love Cole Beasley out the slot this week to have a big week, put up huge slot, numbers and just cash in. Exactly. <laughs> I, I almost went with a, a three man, three man weave with the bills. Uh, Beasley is the third guy for that orgy. Now, my second receiver going with the temple guy. He's at home with Matt rule and he's been an absolute just lock to score you like 15 points. His floor is high. Robbie Anderson against this Falcons team. Yep. Also uh Rut row. Robbie Anderson is my stack along with Mike Davis, $5,900. He is just going to torch this Atlanta defense, huge spot for him. And, and I was prepared to go more this week. Cause I thought they would finally get Anderson's price above more. They haven't done it. No, he's so, he's still. I, I don't know what people are watching, but he's just so fast, and uh, they seem to have great chemistry. So yeah, give me Robbie Anderson, well, fifty nine hundred dollars. More so, you can see the offense is designed to get him the ball more. Last year, I think we saw. I think people expected that Moore was going to get a lot of what we had last year, which was more garbage offense. This 
the offense that Brady's brought to the table involves the the vertical threat that Robbie Anderson is. So, sorry, too much talking. No, I I I, I mean it's just no, a, I, it's a I, great I've been, spot. I've been him. a little hot, so maybe you want to <laughs> fucking listen. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just glad to hear I'm on the same spot as uh, Ryan Real Money Kramer. Who is your third receiver rounding things out here, Adam? I mean, it's going to be boring because it's more Robbie Anderson. <laughs> we we all looked at that Atlantic team and we've seen that they can't cover anybody. I mean, at this point, if you're not playing a receiver who's playing Atlanta, what are you doing with your life? You know, there's always every week they're giving up 30 plus points tons of yards through the air and you just got to do it. You know, if there's a quarterback who can throw the ball 20 yards down the field against Atlanta, you got to be in on one of those receivers and Robbie Anderson, like you said, you nailed it all around. He's just been great. His price point is lower than DJ Moore, who he's been better than just got to get all over that Kramer third receiver. Well, I think it would be wise to fade the Dallas defense. Hmm. And I, I, I kind of flipped the coin. Do I go Evan Ingram or do I go with Danny dimes? This guy, we haven't seen Danny dimes and Slayton have that game yet. <laughs> D Gen pick alert, two touchdowns coming from Hashtag Slayton. Slayton. Wow. Okay. We're going to go Darius Slayton. I think what he offers in the offense is exactly what other teams have been able to exploit against this Cowboys defense. And we saw it with Beckham and it's that, that deep intermediate to deep part of the field that Dallas just has no clue how to defend Darius Slayton is I had to get a giant and I, you can't not fade. The, I, <laughs> I understand there's been a situation with the offense this year, but <laughs> the Jason Garrett revenge spot. You're not thinking about it. They're a, they're a live dog with catching double digits this week. Give me Darius Slayton 4,800. Oh man. That is a dream scenario. If somehow Somehow they upset the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. That is a dream come true. <laughs> and maybe I'm just chasing heat here and maybe it's not <laughs> it's not the way to go, but right now give me a little action on Olamide Zacchaeus. <laughs> and I think that's why I accidentally called uh, Adam Zach earlier cuz I was just <laughs> looking at this guy's name and trying to get ahead of how to actually pronounce it, but uh Zacchaeus Zacchaeus Apologies for messing up your name, but coming off a nine target, eight reception game, maybe Julio goes off again. Maybe he's healthy. I don't know. We're, we're picking these on a Tuesday, but I, I just love the target share this kid had. And he, he looked like he was, he was making great plays on the ball. Seemed to have some chemistry with Matt Ryan he and had this, trust, whatever and, it was. And this Carolina defense has been porous at times. So certainly they've tightened up a little bit as of late, but yep. I wouldn't be surprised if uh my boy Zacchaeus had another great PPR performance coming off a 16 point game in which he didn't even score a touchdown. So seems to be getting involved in the offense. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot at only 3000 gives me a lot more options. Adam, what do you think of that play? Am I getting cute there? <laughs> nah, I love that play. Julio out again, yeah. left early last night. Something's up with Calvin Ridley. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. Zacchaeus seems like a great play. Snap share has been up over 75% increasing target share and you nailed it. He's got some chemistry and there's enough, not enough other weapons that he's going to get loose. He's got some great speed and love the play. Great value at 3000. And like you said, let you do a ton with the rest of your lineup. Great take Adam. Appreciate wow, it. You, Adam knows how to come on the show. It's, it's very important to do two things. Give Sean good ideas that he can take credit for and tell Sean his ideas that you gave him are good ideas. Yeah. Uh, Steve does a Steve does exactly. a good job with the golf, saying like, you know, I don't know about that pick, but I pre that's why I'm here. We bring in the experts, even though I'm also an expert, and it's experts on experts. Ryan, gotta sharpen the spear. Steel sharpens steel, or swords sharpen yeah, swords. Like whatever the expression is. What are you doing at the tight end position? I felt like there were a lot of options this week that were intriguing. Yeah. What what are you doing here, Adam? Uh, there definitely was, but Mo Ali Cox is just on an absolute yeah. hot streak, and Long I gotta get Cox. I gotta get on board this bus and ride. Gotta get on board this bus before it gets too far away. He's still only priced at forty two hundred. Um, like the value there, great matchup against Cleveland, and he's got the trust of uh, Philip Rivers there. You know, just gotta love the athleticism. Gotta love that he's looking to him in the red zone. Just 
you know, stick with it. Sometimes you just got to ride the heater, ride the hot hand. Same like we did, we did with Tanya um, and, and adding a little bit of insight to that Los Angeles chargers expert and Philip rivers expert, Justin yep. Decker was highlighting he, uh, when we were watching the games on Sunday, he's like, he loves Mo Ali Cox. He's a former basketball guy, yep. just BCU. like Antonio Gates. He loves these big guys. I'm telling you, keep putting them in your lineup. So like that play a lot. Kramer, what are you doing on the tight end angle? Uh, I, I mean, I, I like Mo Alley Cox and I think you can even do the Jack Doyle thing. I think just that, that matchup Cleveland has not been very good against the tight end. And, and when you, when you take a look at the teams to let up the most points, uh, the Falcons number one. So I did think about going back to the Ian Thomas. Well, but I, I do, he got a red zone target. He scored a touchdown. This is a promising thing for a guy that caught a lot of hype this off season. But when I look at this list, would it surprise you, Sean? Number two, the Saints. Number three, your Philadelphia Eagles. So this week, I'm going to look to that same price range that Adam did, just a couple hundred dollars cheaper, where I see Eric Ebron. I I like his floor this week. I think he's a lock to score a touchdown. Big Ben coming off the bye. He's going to be well rested. He's at home, and people might be off the stink that is the Philadelphia Eagles after they beat up a a, uh, you know, questionable 49ers team. So tough. That, that questionable 49ers team destroyed your team 36 to nine in New York. Just yeah, the giants need to be relegated. <laughs> I, I don't know if you, you've not been paying attention, but I'm now a Seahawks. I'm, I'm, I'm unlimited, bro. Eric Ebron, 4,000. Great matchup, great matchup. And, and our linebackers continue to be banged up. I mean, they're horrible. I threw it out there like Kittle just murdered you guys. Yeah. Like an all time fantasy performance. Of course the team rallied and had a great game. We'll get to it when we talk okay. defense, but a little more Sorry. insight into that Steelers Eagles game. Number Not one in the division, Philadelphia, first Eagles. place, Philadelphia Eagles. This guy, he had a huge game against the Eagles yep. hasn't gone off since, but I love this matchup mm. this week. The Rams head to the football team where the football team has quietly been really bad against the tight end as well. They're Fourth just on that list. They're just behind the Eagles also let up five uh, touchdowns, 239 yards they've allowed. And I think this is a great spot for Higby to go off Ron Rivera dealing with a ton of uh, medical stuff going on. Jack yeah. Del Rio doesn't know how to cover the tight end. Uh, he's $5,600. I think this is a nice bounce back spot for the Rams. As far as fantasy production could be an ugly game, but I, I think Higby gets some nice goal line looks and they go back to that. I don't know. They, they found a rhythm earlier uh, against some teams and I think they could find a rhythm against this uh, skins defense, can, much like the Ravens. Did. Can I say, can I say something crazy? Yeah. <clears throat> this also could be a week that if you really wanted to get crazy, maybe you wait till Gase gets fired. But at some point, Herndon has to have a game. <laughs> There's no targets there. I like at some point he's got to do something. Maybe yeah. I'm just I'm very. Just I mean, I'm not. Anyway, I'm not playing a joke. Maybe this is a Dan Arnold week. Adam flex spot. What are you looking at here? Rolling out some Dearness Johnson. Dearness Johnson yeah. running back on the Browns, stepping up in a big way here. Went off last week and announced himself to all you non spring football believers out there. <laughs> and Dearness Johnson is a guy who's gotten it done at every level. All right. In college, was a guy consistently at US Florida, about averaged five and a half yards per touch on his career. In the AAF, averaged over six yards per touch. And yesterday and on Sunday averaged 7.3 yards per carry. And he didn't get targeted at all in the passing game, which is shocking because he's actually a super talented receiver, 20 receptions in the AAF averaged 20 receptions a year in college. And this Colts defense that everybody wants to keep hyping up, hyping up had some trouble earlier in the season with um, James Robinson. And I really think this is a big spot for Dearness Johnson. Great value at 4,700 has potential to be a top 25 running back as long as Nick Chubb is out. Yeah. And it looks like Nick Chubb will be out and Kareem hunt could be an interesting play, but he's still kind of powering through that groin thing. So uh, yeah, Man. Johnson certainly has a good spot here and just a warning. If you're going to be playing, uh, Sean likes a good Johnson. So oh, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm he's, a fan. A J- he's a Johnson Cox. specialist. Yeah. I mean, I had a ton of those shirts when we were growing up, big Johnson. <laughs> those remind me of the outer banks for some reason. I think they were banned from our school at some point, but when you're placing your, when you're putting together your lineup, they're literally 
three D Johnsons yeah. in the running back uh, spot and a D Johnson, of course, a uh, receiver for the Steelers. So just be careful. You're playing the right well, D Johnson. Would it kill them to, to differentiate these fucking things? Maybe include the first name Kramer. What are you doing for your flex spot? Uh, so I didn't have a ton of dough here and I could have gone with a double tight end stack. Uh, I thought about going Ingram. Got, I thought about going uh, Mo Ali Cox, as you guys pointed out, good opportunity there for him to score a touchdown. But what I ended up doing was I ended up going with a guy who he seems to be getting a little bit more work uh, every week. And he's got a great matchup. Bill O'Brien, as we, we discussed out the door, interesting matchup to see how they go from here. I, I played Johnson on one side of this. I'm going to play Chenault on the other. Uh, I, I like, uh, I like what they've been doing with him. Uh, they are distributing the ball a lot. So I am kind of playing more for a throwing a dart, hoping for a touchdown. But at this price point in this matchup, we haven't seen Jacksonville get loose on offense uh, much over the last couple of weeks. So maybe they get loose this week. I'm going to play Chanel 4,500. Yeah. And, and kind of to that point, shark had a huge game, a two touchdowns. So maybe Houston, uh, Romeo Cronado, they go out of their way to double him and maybe Chenault, uh Some more opportunities are created for him. My final flex spot. I'm doing it. I'm going back to Buffalo. Give me Stefan Diggs, a major play well, in the flex. In the flex spot, seven thousand dollars. That's not how you're supposed. Are to you kidding me? No, I'm not. Great spot for Stefan Diggs. Uh, legit chemistry with Josh Allen, and again, that Tennessee secondary. They just don't. They don't got much going on. The really weird week. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be dealing with a ton of guys out from COVID. So huge opportunity for this bills team that seems to be traveling well so far. Give me Stefan Diggs seven thousand dollars. Adam, close it out strong. What are you doing on the defensive side? Defense inside of the ball. Got to be going with the Buffalo bills it's capping it. I put three bills in my lineup, <laughs> you know, again, that Tennessee team hasn't been together since last week. Their offense has been s- uninspiring to say the least. And the bills finally looked like they started to put it together in the second half of that game against Vegas. You know, they were getting after Derek Carr and forced two turnovers, sacked him a bunch of times and held them to 86 yards on the ground. The key is going to be containing Derek Henry and getting points on the board. And it seems like the bills are going to do that, which means Tannehill is going to have to throw and the bills are just going to feast on that. Yeah, Sean. Kramer, what are you doing defensively? Well, I told you I've been spending on defenses. Yeah. And and I made a comment to myself last night. Boy, Belichick looks really pissed about how screwed he got in this game. <laughs> Boy, I'd really hate to be the team that has to pay play Belichick next. Oh shit. It's a team that's going to be sporting Rippin or Driscoll or some non competent NFL quarterback. Didn't really care what the matchup was, didn't really care what the price was. Forty two hundred playing the Patriots. Don't care what their stats have been. They're going to absolutely, I don't care that Denver's on long rest. Belichick is going to fuck mind. Fuck this kid. No. And, and that's a great angle. And we've seen this again w- last Thursday while I was on the uh, Denver Broncos correctly predicting oh, that nice. win. Okay. When a rookie quarterback don't comes don't hurt in, yourself patting your back. when a rookie quarterback, we did 10 minutes on your awesome uh, DraftKings. Well, but this is a fantasy show. So we're talking about how I'm the fucking specialist, right? And now. we're going to get to the fantasy angle. We've <laughs> seen this and this is actually me trying to give you a compliment, okay, Ryan. Thank you. We've seen this with a uh, rookie quarterbacks so where they come in, they have that first game. Oh, oh wow. He's looking pretty good. Even though Rippin did try and throw the game away late. Yeah. And then that game after where they have some tape um, and they're able to prepare and they see kind of what they're trying to do. And now he's on the road in a legit, uh, a much tougher spot in New England, off a loss. This is a smash opportunity for the New England Patriots and their defense. For me, twenty eight hundred dollars is how much I spent on the team leading the league in the NFL in sacks right now. Seventeen sacks for the Philadelphia Eagles. This defensive line ha- has struggled early, but they are really heating up. They they dominated a good offensive line. In San Francisco, they dominated the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line. Now they have a matchup against a suspect, an injured, banged up oh boy. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line. This this defensive line is east eating, and we know turnovers come in bunches. They had zero coming into that game. They got three, including a defensive touchdown. The defense is heating up in a big way. Super talented defensive line. Thirty three quarterback hits in the past two games. That is a, that is a stat. That is a thing I'm riding. Give me the Eagles 
in Pittsburgh to get it done from the defensive side of the ball. Oh, all right. I mean, just, come on. Just setting yourself up for disappointment with that <laughs> right there. <laughs> Thank you. Adam. What are you talking about? You, I love our matchup against that offensive line. That's okay. You only see one side. Yeah. Adam and I see the uh, see the circle for the the rectangle of the cylinder. I will be playing some other lineups, but this lineup <laughs> is loading up on the Eagles defense. And again, what do I know? You know, the Eagles I- defense did help me win two hundred thousand dollars <laughs> one time, so maybe I'm maybe I'm partial. <laughs> maybe I am a little biased. I'm, at jo- times, right? I'm joking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Adam. Appreciate you calling in. Make sure you follow Adam on Twitter at Adam Pelletier. Adam, uh, what kind of stuff do you have going on up on the website this week? Uh, we got rankings as always going up Tuesday night. Uh, so by the time y'all are listening to this, they'll be up. Uh, our fantasy, my fantasy pros ranks, as well as our SGPN consensus ranks. Later this week, gonna have a trade value column out. Some of y'all are getting desperate to try to make a move to yes. save your season from being zero and four. We got we're gonna have you covered with some trade value options. Awesome. Nice. Well, make sure you check that out. And uh, thanks again, Adam. Appreciate it. And uh, go Bills, baby. Go Bills. Oh, yeah. Before we get into uh, some more DFS player props, more. I want to give a shout out to Ace Per Head. Of course, Ace is the place if you want to start your own sports book. Just got to go to aceperhead.com slash SGP. Use that link and you can get up to six. Weeks free of their sports book management software. So easy to use a sports book. Even Colby could do it. Very easy to set up, put together. Sports gambling podcast. Oh, sorry. Acepred.com slash SGP. Acepred.com slash SGP. Again, up to six weeks free. You don't need to know about the lines. They set them for you. You, didn't, you don't need to do the grading. They take care of that for you. All you got to do, find the customers, turnkey operation, aceperhead.com slash S G P Kramer. Now we're moving on to thrive fantasy fun, uh, oh fun new God. sponsor. Huh. And again, download that app, go to thrivefantasy.com. Make sure you use that promo code S G P. This is delightful. Sean. They're giving away $50,000 in guaranteed prizes weekly. Although I, I was looking at their NFL. It looks more than that. Um, this week, 1.6 million so far they've given out. Oh my goodness. And it's pretty fun. So the NFL game, the one we're going to do is a Thursday night one, $25 buy-in again right now. And they obviously fill up a little bit more closer to kickoff, but right now there's only five entries out of 222 possible injuries or entries. They pay the first 45. I'm right now the fifth entry. Ryan's probably the fourth or about to be the sixth as he submits it. But I, I haven't clicked submit on mine. Yet. Huge, huge opportunity, and it's pretty fun. Basically, you have twenty props to choose from, and then you pick ten that you want to play. Couple backups in case there's a late uh, player scratch, and then you just go over yeah. and under. Another level to kind of straightforward. Yeah, another level to the game theory is Wait, you can play under. I, it's it's so it, like <laughs> psychological. I'm just like, uh, who the fuck wants to play these unders? Over, over, over. Psychologically, um, there's that angle, but also sometimes instead of like juice or whatever, uh, an under will be worth a hundred points, and then the over will be worth one thirty. So there, so you, when you're submitting your entry, there's like a maximum points you can hit. Um, so there's a lot of levels to game theory, and again, I know a lot of like a lot of our listeners are like deep data analytics guys. It feels like. You know, thrive is a as a new opportunity that could be well, cracked. Exactly, and what I noticed was what you were just highlighting by taking the contrarian side of something, you increase your potential, potential, pool. which means your, you know, if you feel like you have an edge on the lines that are being set for these things, you can obviously increase your expected value, Sean, which is something we're all trying to do as sports gamblers. <laughs> Create some Twitter EV. nerds. All right, your EV. Where's your list? Do you write it down? <laughs> yeah, bitch. Yeah, I write it down. I bet it. I actually bet it. Someone was, there was this guy who was like going. You don't at, need to give context. I could just be upset. Right. It, it was just a f- he, guy was like, you, "Do you do you really track your picks?" It's like, yeah. Of all the things to challenge me on, I I think we probably have records going back at maybe as far as ten years. Ryan <laughs> loves spreadsheets. Okay, we have a bunch of fucking spreadsheets. Yeah. Kramer. Uh, I'll kick things off. I'll yeah, throw out my first player prop. Like this is only the Thursday night game. They do a bunch of different contests. So 
if you're hearing this after Thursday, don't worry. But this is fun too because in the uh, in the other DFS lineup that we gave out, there was no Thursday night players because it's yeah. just a Sunday slate. So fun way to break that down. I'm going Tom Brady under 260 and a half passing yards. Whoa. I think this is kind of I'm predicting a little bit of an uglier game uh, for this Bucks team again. Perfect scenario at home against this Chargers defense. Bears defense still in my mind pretty solid. They only let up 19 points against the Colts. Um, Philip Rivers, similar age group as Tom Brady, outdoors Thursday night against the Bears defense. I think it might scoring might be a little lower, especially for Tampa under 260 and a half passing yards, and that pays out 105. So points. we're on the same here because I I looked. It was either going to be I'm I'm playing a Brady under one way or another. I looked at completions and I saw it was only 90 points to go under. So I took the yardage. I'm with you lockstep. I think this game, you know, we're getting to the part of the season now where I think we start seeing that over regression Thursday night could be a grosser spot. We know both defenses are strong. So I'm with you. Let's fade Tom Brady here and go for the, the more expected or the potential points with under two 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 sixty. And, and again, maybe this is me getting a little cute, but I think Brady will be able to check it down a bunch. So I actually mm. like over 24 and a half completions. Oh, you dog. So a little bit of middle ground here, but I, I think the yards per attempt yards per completion, he had a couple deep balls last week. And again, watching that game live, Mike Evans seemed like he's not quite right. Godwin short week with that hamstring. I don't know what he'll be able to do. I think it's going to be a lot of checking down to Scotty Miller, even some short stuff with Gronk. We'll get to that later, but uh, I'm going over in completions and maybe edging the bet a little bit, but I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I have a game script and I'm trying to find the player props that match that. Well, and this is also interesting because you don't get to pick every prop. They give you a no, they and, and amount. yeah, and whether so it's completions, touchdowns, whatever. When you told me we were going to do this, one of the angles I wanted to play was to because Chicago does really well against receive number one and number two receivers. So I wanted to look to find could could we get Scotty Miller? Yeah, in there because that is a weakness for the Bears. We we couldn't. We that's not an option. So what next best thing? It's the tight end. OJ Howard, he's Ooh, out. Yep. Gronk is in. Uh, I think there are two ways you can play Gronk, and one of those is for him essentially to score a touchdown. Gronk to score a touchdown is 130 points. Are you kidding me? As much as I thought it'd be fun to play the yardage, you know Brady likes him around the end zone. I know Evans is still there, but I think there will be opportunity. So I'm going to take Gronk over a half touchdowns. For a hundred and thirty potential points, yeah, which is pretty high for these, and I'm also on that as well. Gronk over a half touchdown. It's Gronk at prime time. I I think he could get one near the end zone. I, I mean, yeah, you laid out the perfect case. I'll I'll throw out another one here. Mike Evans under seventy and a half receiving yards. You nailed it with. They do well against. We the, both have this one, and, and this is kind of an injury thing too. I think the short week, you don't get your normal routine. He just looks super gimpy uh, running down the field. And it's a little bit easier when you don't have your cornerbacks and and the chargers defense was so banged up. I, I think he's going to be in a tougher spot against this uh, Chicago D Kramer. What else you got? Going? All right, so I've given out Brady under yards, Evans under yards and Gronk uh, over a half touchdown. I'm going to flip over to the bears matchup. I really like uh, the bucks are just the bucks are good against number one receivers. So my first instincts were let's get Allen Robinson going. He's going to be great with foals. But when I looked at the data and I looked at DVOA, especially this bucks defense, they are really good against number one receivers, number two in the league in DVOA against number two receivers, 29th in the league. So mm. I'm attacking it. Uh, I'm attacking Miller. I'm attacking him hard. I'll give them both out at the same time. Sean, I know we're kind of going all over. Well, I'm going through over three and a half catches for only 85 points. And I'm going over 41 and a half yards for an uh, even hundred points. Well, Ryan, that's interesting. Cause I'm, I did the opposite Ooh. and, and mine again is a less data driven approach and more a gut <laughs> handicapper. This offense is bears offense. They get right when they're throwing jump balls to Allen Robinson. You saw a couple deep shots uh, that Foles tried um, late in that Colts yep. game that didn't hit, but then he had some jump balls to Allen Robinson late and you're, we're watching the game. Like that's how you do it. Let Allen Robinson go up and pull these balls down. And I mean, Tampa Bay, you saw Herbert hang in the pocket. I mean, Herbert and Foles, when Foles is playing really well, kind of remind me of similar guys 
Uh, obviously Herbert, a bunch um, more athletic in the pocket, but like the way Herbert just stood in the pocket, got nailed and he just chucked up a deep ball for yeah. a touchdown. I can imagine Foles doing that. So I'm going over 80 and a half receiving yards for Allen Robinson. I'm taking the uh, over a half receiving touchdown for Allen Robinson as well. Okay. I like, I mean, I, I don't mind the touchdown prop because I think he does like to sling it to him. I'm just going to not 80 and a half was a lot to me. Uh, but I am going to take another Bears over, and that's attacking another weak spot of this defense for Tampa Bay, and that's the tight end. Mm. Uh, they've not been great defending the tight end. DVOA has them 24th in the league. And Jimmy Graham, again, Nick Foles, we really liked the tight end last year in Jacksonville because Nick Foles likes throwing to a tight end. Really, he likes locking onto a couple targets. Jimmy Graham, over 40 and a half yards in this spot is 115 points. I, I like the contrarian angle of this too. So I, I'm going to play that Jimmy Graham may, maybe has a game. Maybe Jimmy Graham and Nick Foles build some uh, rapport here. So that's my third. I've given out three Bears picks and I've given out three Bucks picks so far. Yeah, I like that angle. I'm also, I, I was thinking of going under, but you, you talked me into it in your explanation. And there's more expected points over 115 points if you hit this. Jimmy Graham, 40 and a half receiving yards seems super value or realistic. And Kind of combining all these, Nick Foles over two oh, yeah, okay. forty-five and a half. Uh, again, I, I just think there's they're going to hit on a couple deep balls. So I thought you were going to get take my next one, and that's Nick Foles to have over two and a half passing touchdowns plus interceptions. Why this is the dog at plus one twenty or one hundred twenty points? I don't get it. Nick Foles will throw interceptions. Nick Foles not worried about throwing interceptions. Nick Foles is going to throw at least. A touch, two touch. I would say two touchdown and in an interception feels pretty reasonable for yeah. a Thursday night spot. So I'm going again with the contrarian side of this. 120 points on Nick Foles over passing touchdowns and interceptions, two and a half. David Montgomery, I'm going under his rushing touchdowns and receiving touchdowns. Basically, I don't think he'll score a touchdown. To me, I think it's it's more Anthony or sorry, Allen Robinson, mm. Jimmy Graham, uh, and that kind of stuff. So that's that's what I'm seeing. For the Bears touchdown scored, and I like the value a little bit on the under, getting 110 points. I think I have uh, one left, Ryan. Okay, so I have three left. Somehow. All right. Hit well, uh, two. So I, I I went slightly chalky here because the value seemed very delightful for me, and that's I went both kickers over. Hmm. Even though it was 75 for Santos at over six and a half, and it was uh, 85 for suck up with over seven and a half. Both were very depressed on the typical eight and a half, and I think once again, both of these defenses have uh, have shown the ability to kind of lock teams down around the red zone. It wouldn't be crazy to see field goals. If anything, I would I thought that it would be shaded the other way with these props because there might be field goals here. I mean, you look at the Bears one. If he gets two field goals and an extra point, I'm in. Yeah, that's so all you need. I'm taking both the kicker props. I have one left now, Sean. Okay. My final one, Anthony Miller under 41 and a half receiving yards. Oh. To me, it's more, I, I just think he's going to be the odd man out. I think it's going to be a Robinson, Jimmy Graham uh, game. And I think Anthony Miller, David Montgomery, I'm less high on them. And so that was kind of my angle. I, I think he has more chemistry with Robinson, but your data kind of pointing to them being, you know, not as good with the number two receiver. That's an interesting still, angle. Still early with the data. Uh, do we know anything about Leonard Fournette this week? Um, because my instincts were just, this, he's on this list. And to me, short week, a guy that uh, might not play, I can get his receiving and rushing yards uh, at 50 and a half, and I can get 100 points on the under. I don't know if they have rules around if a player doesn't play, it's no action. Um, yeah, I think actually I do think it is no action and that's why you pick okay. They the have two one. ice picks Got where it. in case of um in case of whatever. So you you said you like the under on a Fournette? I, I I don't from a game theory perspective, I don't know why you wouldn't play it because we know he's going to be injured. If he doesn't play, it just defers to another one. If he does, I would like the chances of him going. Well, and and I think you're hitting on something. He's going to be a game time decision with that ankle right now. And I think they're going to kind of push for him to play because uh, this just broke. 
Kenyon Barner suspended for four games for violating the NFL policy on PEDs. And LaShawn McCoy is banged up. It's just going to be Fournette. I think they just, I think Fournette has to play basically. So, um, because they're just so thin right now at running back. Yeah. Uh, okay. So then ha- I'm, I'm sitting, I'm looking at my screen. How do you, how do you select the ice picks? Well, normally after you pick your 10, the you next submit. two are ice picks in Got case it. of. So how emergency. many maximum points do you have for your 10? I'm curious. For my 10, my maximum points is 1,995. Okay. I'm at 1,025. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with those kicker props. Yeah. Playing it safe with the so kickers. Do, do we tell people our ice picks? Um, sure. My ice I, I pick don't. is under three and a half catches for Anthony Miller. Again, fading oh my that. God. What? How dare you? <laughs> and then uh, Santos uh, under six and a half points, just because it's oh my plus one twenty five. Did you not hear my logic? How dare you? <laughs> yeah. So uh, for my over, for my first one, it's Gronk over on yards, uh, one hundred five. Points, uh, just same logic. It's a good matchup, and then my second one, uh, I also don't like David Montgomery, so I made his under point uh, five touchdowns my second ice prop. Yeah, that'll do it for the Thrive uh, Fantasy lineup. Get in there and, and tell us your name. Kind of tweet at us who you like this week. Say it'll your name. Fun. And well, it'll be it'll be fun to see if any of our listeners. Again, it's only a two hundred and twenty-two sample size, so. I know DJ Nation. Uh, I mean, it'd be awesome to see one of these guys come home with the uh, big prize, Kramer. Yeah, and, and I mean, I, I don't. Um, how many people are in the contest now? I, I think we're still at a, a at a very very small number. And uh, prize payouts first. Six. I'm the sixth one. Sean. First place, fifteen hundred bucks. So that that's a fun. And it uh, only cost us twenty five. Twenty five, and again, they pay out a decent number, forty five. So. You think forty five divided by two hundred and twenty two? That's your chance of walking away with at least so, ten dollars so of profit. First, first place is sixty to one. Not too yep. bad. Yes, please. Sixty to one out of two. You know, just do the math Wait, there. Good. You shouldn't tell people to join this for being selfish. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely you, don't join this. Con- don't go to thrive uh, fantasy.com. Don't use that promo no. code SGP. Don't download the app. Don't go against <laughs> Kramer and I, because you're no. messing up the prize. No, no, no. I like my lineup <laughs> and I'm really good. If you haven't been listening, I'm really good. So maybe you don't want to oh, compete. Hot, 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 hot. Well, that'll do it for the DFS picks podcast and uh, make sure you sh- subscribe, rate review again, merch Monday, get those five star reviews in for your chance to win some awesome uh, SGP merch. Of course, check out the, uh, the Sunday night recap podcast. A lot of fun there. Just taped of course, and drop the week six college football picks podcast, yes, sir. And closing out the week's uh, NFL picks podcast will be out tomorrow evening as well. Jesus. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast. The content machine keeps on rolling for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean second, the money green. And he is Ryan. Do you think Aaron calls him Robert or Bobby Kramer? Let it ride.